Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, uh, allowing us to help show you how to fulfill your 2014 resolution to integrate your enterprise applications. My name is Barry Flaherty and I'll be your host and moderator of today's webinar. I'm part of the business development team here at Jitterbit Namir uh, and I'll be your point of contact for any follow-up questions as well. Joining us today is also Vincent Vlog. Vince uh, is a consultant, he's our technology lead here at Jitterbit Amir. Uh, Vince has over eight years experience working on implementation projects for Jitterbit customers. Vince, I, I would prefer to say, certainly knows this stuff because prior to working with us at Jitterbit, he's also been a consultant at IBM and PwC. So before we start, let me take a minute to go through some housekeeping items with everyone. Um, today's webinar will be recorded and made available to you. Everyone will be on mute throughout today's call. And if you have any questions for us, please do use the question and answer panel on the right-hand side of your screen and then type your questions in. We'll, of course, answer as many of your questions as we can at the end. Okay, let's go ahead. So let's get started, sit back, and hope you enjoy the webinar. So uh, next slide, please. As most of you have probably realized, um, integration is rapidly changing. Um, I think the explosion of mobile, social, and cloud endpoints, and of course new hybrid cloud architectures, and that shift from the sort of traditional internal SOAP APIs to external facing REST APIs are transforming the way that companies do business. It's no longer enough to just connect these systems and data within the firewall. I think today, and what we're seeing out in the market is companies are looking for new ways to connect every employee, every customer, every partner, inside and outside the sort of corporate firewall and of course faster than ever before. So I think looking at you know agile integration, speed, time to value and external connectivity is going to be critical to the success going forward. Okay. I think um, on the next slide we'll see here as well um, you know how do you integrate at the speed of the cloud without losing control? It's a challenge for a lot of CIOs, IT directors, analyst type people that we're coming across here in Amir. Most companies admit that they're not prepared, uh, and we're certainly seeing this. Many clients here in Europe, and I think enterprise architects are asking this core question: How can we manage the speed and complexity of everything that's going on around these new integrations without losing control of the core phases of the integration lifecycle. So in our case, it's this ability to design, uh, deploy, and run, and then manage, and, and, and through sort of admin consoles, those integration projects. Next slide, please. So in terms of just a bit uh, and, and what we've created here. So we've designed, we feel, this platform um, around all needs of agile integration. It's certainly designed to deliver the integration speed um, and certainly the agility that a lot of companies need to compete. Uh, I think this platform also gives them the control and I think more importantly the, the governance that everyone expects today. I mean, I think we're a lot governed by data, integrity, Sarbanes-Oxley and compliance and so on. So I think Jitterbit has, has certainly come up with what we feel anyway very strongly is the first integration solution based on this modern cloud platform. So that includes full integration lifecycle management. It's going to allow you to connect with nearly um, any internal or external endpoint faster than ever before. And you can run those integrations either on-premise or in the cloud. Best of all, Jitterbit's new platform provides um, this centralized live web management console to manage everything from users through to your environments to runtime agents. Uh, we certainly feel that the result that we've come up with here now is a solution that finally balances this need for our speed um, and, and ease together with the control governments most solutions lack out there in the market today. And I think one of the nice things we hear back from our clients and worldwide is it just runs uh, and that's central to everything that Jitterbit do. Next slide please. So if we take the, the whole sort of amplification of this value of all your business applications as well, Jitterbit's integration platform is based on 10 years of integration experience with thousands of companies and endpoints. Uh, I think the game changer for us was certainly Salesforce's um, data loader and app exchange where we've now got I think 25,000 downloads. 
So with all that in, in mind, you know, this whole amplification for a lot of our clients out there is allowing us to connect to all these enterprises. So whether that's streamlining orders between Salesforce and SAP, like many of our customers, and you'll see a couple of them here um, on the slide, such as Bio, or enhancing service management between Microsoft and the cloud, as Virgin Australia have done there. Uh, here at EMEA, you know, we've been very busy as well. We've been working with big brands uh, like Office Depot and Guardian News and Media and Dorma. Um, so, you know, I mean, more and more enterprises are waking up to the possibilities um, around just a bit uh, and allowing us to make the connecting and sharing data between these systems easier than ever before. So with that kind of engagement that we're seeing either, you know, through Jitterbit directly or through partners and system integrators, you know, this just gives you guys out there a snapshot of some of the clients, some of the vertical markets. I mean, we're pretty strong in publishing media, financial services, uh, travel and transport. Um, so it's pretty busy for us. What I'd like to do now is also hand off to Vince to probably take you through more, a more detailed look at the sort of three core pillars of our Jitterbit offering, and that's predominantly design, deploying those integrations, and then managing those integrations. So Vince, I'll hand over to you for the next segment of our presentation this morning. Thanks, Barry. <clears throat> so before I um, talk more about the architecture and capability, Let's just have a quick look at a, a customer implementation. So Skullcandy are a great example of a customer that has uh, used Jitterbit to amplify the value of their business application. Our product sits at the heart of a new digital go-to-market strategy. They tie together orders from Amazon and eBay, um, from major stores like Best Buy through SPS Commerce, and from their website through Magento, and then Jitterbit ties that information together, pushes it into the SAP back office system for processing and into Salesforce.com sales and service cloud. Jitterbit also helps them to streamline the shipping process through service providers like FedEx and UPS. And what do they get out of that? Well, they've now got better visibility across applications and partners. Uh, they can deploy a new storefront in, in hours, uh, not weeks. Um, previously, their uh, order errors took 24 hours to discover, and they now see those in real time. And they've moved their critical data operations uh, in-house. So Harmony provides full integration lifecycle management to control the three phases of integration, or what we like to refer to as the three phases of modern integration. Design. Uh, the Jitterbit Studio allows non-developers to very quickly and visually build out complex integrations, uh, including endpoint connectivity, data mapping, business logic, and error management, without the need to write custom code. Deploy. You can organize your integration project across any number of environments, like development, testing, and production, and Harmony manages all of that in the cloud for you. You can then run those integrations on our cloud, behind your firewall, in a private cloud, or in a hybrid implementation. And then manage. Our platform allows you to create and manage your own team to support your integrated back office process. This includes secure user access control and full rights management. And all of this can be accessed through the web management console. Harmony provides alerts, dashboards, real-time activity monitoring, of all your integration processes. And this allows you to effectively segregate the role of designer of the integration process from the operational management of that process. So as Barry said, we've got over 10 years integration experience helping customers to connect to hundreds of enterprise endpoints. Our studio includes wizards to step non-developers who understand the process and data through connecting to open standards like SOAP, REST, XML, ODBC, and JDBC. And we also include native connectors for the most common front and back office applications, like Salesforce.com, SAP, the Microsoft Dynamics family of ERP solutions, and NetSuite. We support all four of the modern integration scenarios. 
So that includes um, data, be that migration, uh, ETL activities, uh, replication, synchronization, uh, real-time integration through exposing HTTP uh, endpoints, REST web services, um, or hosting SOAP web services. Um, we also allow for complex business process orchestration. Our studio allows the user to map out the process, implement business logic through formulas, and control the flow of data through the process. And, and lastly, Harmony brings with it this, this, this concept of, a, of an integration hub um, for companies that need to provide and manage integration on behalf of their customers, like ISVs and SIs. And we'll show you in the Web Management Console um, how you can add or where users can be invited into um, an organization. So JetBit's philosophy is design once, run anywhere. When you're ready to deploy your integrations, Harmony provides the fastest and most flexible runtime options in the integration space. Our design is completely separated from the runtime environment. You build your integration and then deploy based on the needs of the business, be that the Harmony cloud, a private cloud, or behind your firewall. We've implemented flexible agent groups and a security model that enables you to effectively separate the integration delivery from the operational management of that integration. We provide smart agent clustering, allowing for scaling, performance, high availability, and DR, and our cloud agents scale elastically to support the needs of our users. How do we do that? Well, we don't generate code. We deploy a metadata definition of an integration process through a design API. We enable the management of multiple environments and smooth deployment of changes across those environments. This allows someone other than the integration de designer to operationally launch, monitor, and manage the production deployed process. And all that can be deployed exactly how the business needs to run the service. We've wrapped an architecture that was designed from the ground up to support faster, more flexible integration around a 10-year proven integration engine. It's an enterprise-ready architecture that will scale for the needs of your business. So SAP, um, we've had a SAP connector um, released for over a year now. Um, it provides uh, SAP connectivity through native BAPIs, RFCs, and IDOCs. Um, we provide a visual data mapping tool and the ability to orchestrate complex business processes. So with a slick user interface, Jitterbit makes quick work of even the most complicated integration projects. So that's not to say that SAP is easy. It's just, just to say that we've got the right tools in that space to help people to deliver on SAP integration. And this is what we're going to go through today, an example quote to order or quote to cash process. We need to sync the customers, sync products, uh, the price books, and then manage the flow of data in real time. And we make this happen using our salesforce.com and SAP connectors. But I mean, we're showing SAP here. This could just as easily be NetSuite, Oracle EBS, or one of the other Microsoft Dynamics family of ERP systems. So let's get into the demo. So I'll just start by pulling in our browser and showing you the web management console. So I'll just log in. And what we're presented with is the Web Management Console dashboard. I get a high-level view of what's happening in my organization or the other organizations I've been invited into. So I can see alerts, activities, uh, environments and projects, uh, notifications that the platform is sending me, my agent groups, and the organizations here of which I'm a member. 
So my base organization here doesn't have a lot in it, but if I change to another organization, we can see there's a lot more happening here. There's deployed operations, deploy projects, six environments sat here. And if I go to the menu here, I can dig into more detail. I can look at the activities. I can see the operations that ran, whether they were successful, whether they raised errors. And uh, also in terms of long running operations, I can cancel out of operations. So this gives me control over, over what's happening. If I go back to the menu, I can look at the projects that are deployed and the environments that they're deployed into. So you can see here there's a couple of projects listed with the same name here that are deployed across multiple environments. So in this case, it's, it's one, one set called Jitterbit Office Environment, the other Public Cloud Environment. This could just as easily be dev, test, or production. If I go back to the menu and look at my environments, this is where I can configure out the environments I need. And if you were thinking of a, you know, an integration hub, you might have here you know, a numerous environments that you're running on behalf of other customers. Or a customer might have invited you into their environment uh, to see the projects that they're working with. Here under agent groups, we set up agent groups to uh, uh, include agents that either run in the cloud or are running in a private cloud or are running behind your firewall. And this is where you cluster agents together um, to achieve you know, higher throughput, higher availability, and, and faster processing of your data. And then lastly on here on the web management console, I can, I can look at the organizations that I'm a member of. And I can drill into my organizations, look at the roles that are there, and even invite people into that organization. So you can see here, there's a number of people sitting with a, an administrator role in this organization. Um, but I can easily change the roles, build new role types, and uh, configure their, 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 their access to the environment. So that's the web management console. You can see here how it uh, enables the, the non-designer uh, to um, monitor what's happening in an integration process. Let's take a look at the, the Jitterbit Studio, and I'll step you through um, a pre-built project we have which shows um, an SAP integration. Now here's the project. You can see here it's only deployed across one environment. If I had dev test live here, um, it would show three environments, and I could seamlessly navigate between those, and also, you know, deploy in those environments or migrate objects uh, between those environments. So I'll just start at the SAP customer customer list um, because this is one of the initial syncs. Uh, you can see here it's using a standard BAPI, the BAPI customer get list, and the, in, the, in the BAPI definition here, Jitterbit is just presenting you with easy options in order to generate the, the, the operation, which is a container for integration, and to generate the request and response structures for that operation. So this would run all the customers And then we'd upsert those customers into Salesforce's accounts. And again, you can see here, if I click here, this was all wizard driven as well. Um, I've selected the Salesforce org, uh, the login. You can see the external ID here and then the source from where the data is coming from. But the interesting piece in this is the real time workflow. This is the piece that. Uh, you know, seamlessly pulls together the two systems and uh, manages the, uh, the, 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 the data push between them. If I open up the first one here, you see we've got a chain of four operations, um, the first of which receives 
uh, data from Salesforce. Salesforce, uh, through its workflow, has a comp uh, concept of a, an outbound message, um, which Jitterbit can receive in real time. Um, it then uses that message to query and pull the opportunity uh, details, header and line items, um, that can then be, in the third operation here, used to create the sales order in SAP. And the last operation just feeds back um, the order details of what was created in SAP uh, back to the opportunity. So let's look at that in action. I'll just come back to my browser and into Salesforce and uh, we'll take a look at an opportunity. We'll close one that opportunity which should then trigger this outbound message and, uh, and then we'll refresh and we should be able to see the SAP order number uh, coming back to us. So let's open the opportunity. I'll scroll down. So I just need to edit this. You can see here the order number, blank order number, um, the line items. There's a, there's a list of 12 here um, and the stage. This opportunity is at prospecting. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit this, set it to closed one, and save the opportunity. So this is where the, the, the outbound message gets triggered. Um, Jitterbit receives it. It's now writing uh, that data into SAP and then taking the response from SAP and pulling it back to Salesforce. And it happens in real time. So I just need to refresh here. And you can see here we've had a, an order number populated into the opportunity, uh, which is the sales order number in SAP. So if I navigate across to SAP now, we can take a look at that order and compare it to the opportunity. So just refresh here, wants me to log in again. Display a sales order and give it the sales order number that was in Salesforce. And there we have it, there's a sales order. The, the purchase order number here has been populated, just to show we can, with the um, opportunity name in Salesforce. And obviously it's written back the order number to Salesforce. But you can see here as well, there's our 12 line items. And these came out of the, the, you know, the product and price book sync. So there's the, uh, the demo done. I'll hand back to Barry now and we'll take some questions and answers. Uh, well, well, we'll give you answers. We'll take some questions from anybody who's got questions. Barry, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Great. Um, so that's how you do it. I've never known how to do it all this time. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's get some questions out there. As a reminder, if you've got a question for, for Vince or I, uh, do use the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen to type in your questions. Uh, we'll answer as many as you can. Uh, likewise, if anyone's got any questions or any live projects or requests for additional information and demos, we could probably take that offline after the webinar also. So, um, the first question here, outstanding presentation, is it possible to receive the information, Stefano? Yes, it is. We'll uh, make sure we can get something across to you as well. I think this is being recorded, so as soon as that's live, we'll share that information with you. Um, question here, Vince, um, why is Harmony a game changer? What's the difference between Boomi and Talend also? So maybe you want to take that one at the top. So, I mean, I think certainly um, from an ecosystem perspective, um, the way we're sitting in with Salesforce uh, over the uh, over the past few years um, is setting us aside. But I think I think the the, the biggest part of this is um, we, we've architected a platform uh, based on innovations that are available now. You know, we're not um, sitting on you know 
five-year-old infrastructure or five-year-old technologies um, that we're pushing out to the cloud. We've got a, a robust engine, and mm -hmm. we've architected uh, you know, a new platform for the way integration is done today, not the way integration was done two years ago. You know, how we position against someone like uh, a talent. Well, we're, 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 we're not a code generator. Jitterbit is about uh, generating uh, metadata of, of integration projects that then get deployed into the cloud, which gives us a, a, a load more flexibility um, and gives our customers a load more flexibility in how they deploy the solution. Okay. Um, question here as well. Can you explain some more about exception handling in the product? It's all good when things work well, but dot, dot, dot. <laughs> So what, what I, uh, I, 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 I meant to show um, earlier, and I'll try and bring it back here in the web management console, um, is number one, you, you don't need to be um, the integration designer to see what happened or, or what went wrong. You can see here, um, you know, it wasn't smoke and mirrors. Um, this was the, these were the operations that ran and I can I can see these operations and uh, and see what happened, so I can monitor in real time. But also, what typically typically happens in an implementation is that um, you know c customers will supplement um, some of JIP. It's already detailed logging um, to provide um, that their own login and their own exception handling. But if I look in the studio as well, you know on every operation. You know, I've got a way and means to deal with what happens on success of that operation and what happens if that operation fails. So I can trigger another operation, which might be you know, logging to another system or creating a ticket somewhere, or I can be emailing into uh, a ticket-based system or a, an email group to warn that something's happened. And all of that you know, supplements everything that the web management console delivers in terms of alerts and monitoring. So, so you can go to whatever level you want to go to with Jitterbit in terms of you know, how you do that trapping, how you handle those exceptions and errors when something goes wrong. And hey, things do go wrong in integration from time to time. You don't capture all of the scenarios. Rogue data comes in that you don't know how to deal with or the process isn't built to deal with, and you need a way to handle that. And so over time as well, you build those into the projects that you deploy. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few coming in now. Um, how to generate the order number on closed opportunity? Sorry, I'm not uh, sure. I... Yeah, one question there. Uh, next question, how can we add validations with just a bit and can we manipulate the data? Yeah, sure. So um, let me open up one of these. Um, and I'll take the query here. It's not too simple. So you can see here it's a visual mapping, and generally these are just these are just straight mapped across. You can see my opportunity and my opportunity line items. You literally drag something from the left to the right or the right to the left. But this one here, um, this has got a formula attached to it. You can see here it's got a formula. So if I double click this. It launches the uh, the formula builder for me, and this is the, the the area in which I can manipulate and add additional um, uh, validation around um, how that data is transformed. So there's something like over 200 functions here that enable you to you know manipulate strings, uh, manipulate date formats. Um, run regular expressions, uh, pass XML, uh, do database lookups to other systems external from the process, or indeed launch another process um, that's going to pull other data. And if I if I go back to the the operation, you can see here this this blue line, you know, denotes something that was that was launched. So I might be launching a a web service call to go and get a latest exchange rate. I might be running a database lookup during that mapping um, 
to go and turn a you know a country ISO code into a into a country name. Jibbit enables you um, to, to to get as uh, you know as simple or as complex as you want to get on an integration and do the the depth of validation or error trapping that you need to do as an organization. But it also allows for that fairly simple orchestration of a process, drawing out a process. Uh, Vince, is there any limitation on the number of calls or transactions per day from SAP to Salesforce and vice versa? Second question from the same person. So technically, no. Um, we don't apply any limitation in terms of how we implement you know, our architecture. Um, but logically, um, Salesforce definitely uh, implements limits in its API, and you just need to be a little bit smart about how you use them and um, you know, when you send the data. If you've got a, an unlimited Salesforce account in terms of the API, then nothing to worry about. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of the subscriptions do have some limitations around them. But again, Jibbit helps you work around those. You don't need to configure. If I look at a, um, a wizard, you don't need to configure the dynamics of Salesforce's API. Jibbit knows it. Jibbit knows that a query with Salesforce um, has a limit of 2,000. And then it does the clever work in the background around chunking up that data to achieve maximum throughput and speed uh, in the integration. It's also about when you're working with um, Salesforce, it's also about uh, understanding which API you should be using at the right time. But technically, we don't impose any limitations in terms of uh, you know, how we implement our pro product. Uh, how many objects are loaded in, or can be loaded in one integration? Well, if I understand the question, as, as many as you want, there isn't a limitation on uh, objects. So we're showing this demo on uh, Jitterbit Studio 7.0.015. Obviously online it's not available yet. Um, can you give an indication of when this will be available? Uh, so it will be Q1 uh, this year. Um, it's, uh, it's in a private beta at the moment. We do have customers that have already started uh, using uh, the platform because they're so keen to get going, um, but the formal release will be sometime this quarter. Uh, so it says here we have a, a few premises legacy based apps, looks like we've developed standard connectors for many apps. How do the non-standard apps work so in terms of looking to speed up the development process? Um, well, so we anything standards based um, we can connect to. So if the app uh, provides uh, a SOAP API, a REST API, or exposes the database, or even you know some kind of flat file input output that we can get to, then you know Jitterbit can deal with it. Jitterbit can talk to it. Um, generally, if we're writing to applications, we prefer to write through an API. It's the best practice. It ensures that the business logic is triggered when the data goes in. But in terms of reading, sometimes it's, it's, it's nicer to come straight from the database and um, because it's faster uh, and th there's less limitation. Most APIs are throttled or, or limited in some way, especially in um, you know, multi-tenant software as a service in, in environments. So in terms of the legacy, there's a number of options to get to it. But Jibbit also has um, a plug-in architecture. So even when you know we've engaged with uh, products that um, have proprietary uh, databases that offer no uh, connectivity options, and um, you know their, their, their APIs are not open standards based, we've still been able to get at them um, where they've uh, uh, you know given us access to a Java API or a, a, a you know some sort of C API that we can tap into. We can, we can wrap XML around those sort of libraries and um, just bring them into Jitterbit almost natively so that they can be attacked through scripts. So th there's a raft of options for dealing with uh, legacy. You know, obviously in a, in, in a, in a, in a platform like Harmony, we're, we're, we're gearing up for 
um, customers who want to do lots of cloud and SaaS based integration. But you know, we, we, we haven't forgotten about the legacy that's out there and we're good at legacy. Data loader, quite a few questions around data loader. So how do I upgrade from the free data loader? And another question is, why would I use just a bit rather than the Salesforce data loader.io? Um, so I think Salesforce.io is not own, is not a Salesforce product. I think we're talking about the um, the, the Apex data loader. So number one, um, upgrade between um, the cloud data loader and Harmony um, will be seamless. Uh, the cloud data loader that is released at the moment um, is running on our Harmony platform. And that's been released for some time. So the platform has been available for some time. We just, we're just finishing off and, and polishing some of the, uh, the, the functionality that's going to hit general release. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you're looking at an upgrade from data loader to, uh, to, to the Jibis full products, then, it, you know, it's probably best to take that offline and, and, and have a chat or a call about it. Um, yeah. The rationale for moving is, um, well, support. Support is always a, a good rationale. We do have to get satisfaction um, uh, community support forums, but, you know, lots of enterprises, that, that's not enough for them. They want um, a formal support agreement. So that's generally a, um, a compelling reason to move, even if your requirement is fairly straightforward. And we do have some big enterprises that have fairly straightforward requirements uh, who probably could have um, implemented just on the data loader. And that would have been fine, um, but they wanted a fully supported service. Um, and they, they wanted a throat to choke. So, you know, they, 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 they bought our enterprise edition. Um, other rationale to move um, would be um, relationship type queries in Salesforce, um, would be um, more complex logic and orchestration in terms of how you want to process things. I mean, there's 20,000 people out there using the data loader at the moment. Um, so, you know, obviously it checks a lot of boxes. Um, but there's, uh, you know, the, 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 there are requirements there. You don't have to go too far in terms of wanting to fully automate something. And we do provide a scheduler, but fully automate something that requires a little bit of logic. And when you need that logic, you, you need the full product. And in terms of differentiation between, you know, Salesforce's Apex uh, data loader and our data loader, well, you know, number one, we, we, we built our data loader for Salesforce. You know, they, 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 they engaged us to build a data loader. Num number two, um, we provide database connectivity, which you can't do in the Apex data loader. And you can't manipulate data in the Apex data loader the same way you can in uh, Jitterbit. You can't manipulate the date formats. There's no, there's no sort of transformation mapping. You're literally just pulling a source and popping it onto a target. The best you can do is map the fields. You can't manipulate the data anyway, in any way. So if you, it, that, that, that would be a, a compelling reason to try our data loader. And the upgrade from there to, to Harmony should be dead easy for people. Uh, quite a few people have got projects. Uh, we're looking for a similar integration on order management, SAP to Salesforce. It's not a complex system or scenario. What's the pricing for the limited edition and the license cost? Well, I think we have three tiers of that. We have uh, entry-level standard subscription. Uh, it was $9,600 a year, and that's a two-day SLA response time from support. Next level up is our professional subscription around $24,000 this price, uh, and that's around four or five, six endpoints. We made generally that's the negotiation point for a lot of our customers coming in. And then the enterprises are sort of unlimited offering at $48,000 a year. Uh, and that's a six hour response time. But generally, I think about 70% of the tickets raised are answered inside six hours. Is that right, Vince? Just around that? Yeah, and, and um, you know, for those on the call that are, you know, SAP customers, our, our SAP customers all buy enterprise. The connector is included um, at the enterprise level. Um, and they, they, they just typically the nature of those organizations, the size they are, their investment in SAP, um, the criticality of the back office process, they, they all come in at the enterprise level. Um, and and it just because, you know, that's what they need. 
if you're looking at something that I'm, and, and what we've shown today could just as easy have been, um, you know, NetSuite or one of the Microsoft family of ERP tools. Um, if, if you're in that level, then um, that, that's typically a slightly smaller uh, organization and, and they come in at the professional level. You know, it's a, it's a different implementation. Uh, SAP is a, you know, a, a, a beast all to itself and um, it, it requires, uh, you know, a little bit more. Uh, okay, quickly going through, quite a few questions. Uh, how, to, how to make HTTP post requests for every record? If, for example, I have 100 records in just a bit, then how do we make individual 100 requests by HTTP post? Uh, does Jitterbit take any releases? How many releases and downtime per year? And what was the Jitterbit uptime in terms of SLA? So there's a few questions mixed in there. Okay, so I think you've already talked about the, the you know the the SLAs around the um, subscription levels. You know, I think the input one of the important points is um, our cloud data loader uh, has been out a long time. Um, you know, it was released last year. Uh, we've had zero outages, and that is all built and running on um, the Harmony infrastructure, the Harmony platform. So we haven't had any outages yet, <laughs> and we're not expecting. Um, we manage the environment across multiple zones. Um, you know, we, we use uh, elastic scaling. Um, so if we lose a zone, it will automatically fail over into a into another geographic zone, be that um, you know, US, uh, EMEA, Asia Pac. Um, this this thing is built to fail over and to scale. So we we don't expect, and, and generally even prior to Harmony, um, you know, the JitBit server just sits there and runs. It's not something, you know, and a lot of customers tell us that since they moved. You know, they spent a lot of time previously getting the screwdriver out every day or, or, or rebooting the server. You don't do that with Jitterbit. The thing just runs. Typically, where people have issues is either either rogue data um, or, or, or someone's changed something in a process um, that's caused a failure. Um, but the, uh, the, the underlying engine is uh, uh, rock solid. Um, I, I wasn't sure what the question on the HTTP posts. Can we make them? Uh, yes, uh, we can. We can make and host them. We can receive, um, uh, it, you know, posts from uh, other systems. We can expose a REST web service, and um, we can consume uh, REST web services. Whatever that is, whether that's um, you know XML or JSON-based messages, uh, it doesn't matter to us. Um, we can we can deal with both. And that's interesting because it also enables us to, you know, where we were talking earlier about legacy systems, um, it enables us to expose APIs on systems that don't have APIs to help tie them into, um, you know, a, a, an integrated uh, environment. Uh, question from a guy saying, uh, post request, can you please show this? How do we do that? How do we make a post? I think that was around HTTP post, a question around the records. So he was asking, could we show it's, pro it's probably one to take offline and, yeah. and demo. I can, I, you know, quickly say that, um, you know, you, you effectively, sorry, you effectively set up um, a new source or target, and that source or target would be, HTTP based, and then uh, you use either the URL, a lot of REST APIs, you will um, construct a URL with the, with the request on it. Sometimes you just hit the URL and throw a JSON or a, an XML request at it. Um, but Jitterbit supports, you know, get, post, put, delete, um, both in sources and in targets. And, and while we're here, um, in terms of databases, if it if it has a an ODBC or a JDBC driver, we can talk to it, and it will respect the implementation of SQL that that driver implements. So um, 
we, we can connect to just about anything. Uh, final question as well from one person. Will we be showing this video in Q&A on YouTube? Uh, I'm not sure if it will go on YouTube, but I think it will be on our website. Uh, I know that I we've got quite it. a few. It'll be, it'll be made available somewhere, and we can forward that around to um, you know whoever wants it. Uh, okay, uh, question. What are the best resources to get started on the Jitterbit Learning Curve video forum user guys? What plans have we got for, for that coming up, Vince, in terms of uh, um, collateral? Yeah, sure. So number one, um, the website is a great place to start. I mean, as a tool, it's not rocket science. If you understand your your process and data, it's pretty intuitive to pick up. Uh, number two, you know, reach out to us. Um, either 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 contact Barry or or, or contact myself, um, and uh, we'll help you get started. You know, if there's a if there's a project there. Uh, that we can help or, 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 or prove that we're the right tool for the job, then we'll jump on GoToMeetings and, uh, and help you to get started. Um, we have a lot of success with customers because we're willing to go that extra mile um, in terms of um, you know, delivering on a proof of concept, um, giving them a trial plus experience um, you know, where they, they get some knowledge. We get to prove out that we're the right tool for the job and they get the comfort um, that they've seen it working. So, um, yeah, start the website, reach out to us, we'll run some go meeting sessions. And also over the course of 2014, um, from an EMEA perspective, um, we are going to be out uh, on a roadshow meeting the market. So um, we will be um, dropping in in cities across Europe um, to run roadshow events, um, show the Harmony platform, um, and also uh, talk to a data load of customers. Um, so we'll make sure that um, people are kept appraised of you know, when, when we're in a, a, a city near them. Very good. And very last question, otherwise we're just going to be here all day. <laughs> but it's great. We'll take a lot of this offline, by the way. So thanks very much, everybody, for your questions. Uh, how can we help build the business case inside the organization generally? Have you got any tips yeah. around yeah. it? Yeah. Pain. <laughs> you, you, need to, you need to be able to demonstrate pain. Typically, um, with most of our customers, um, there, 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 is a, there, is, there is a pain there, a you know, and it's not a, just a perceived pain. Because typically, the, the budget holder um, doesn't care whether you know, Bob or Henrik are having a, a hard time of manually processing um, some data. What they care about is that it's... Uh, you know, it's measurable. It's a measurable cost to the business, um, or that there's um, some competitive advantage to be had out of it. But you know, we can we can help you to um, structure uh, the business case around it and uh, make the case for integration. And it, it, integration isn't what it was ten years ago. You, you're, you're not going to the table, you know, looking to structure an 18-month project. You know, 20 resources and uh, you know a hatful of development to tie two systems together. Um, Jitterbit is a is a pretty low cost integration solution if you go and compare to to our competition. The number one of which is 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 custom code, and and companies wanted to to hand roll their integrations. You know, we're a cheap option. Our integrations are going to happen. You know, and deliver value in. You know weeks, not months, and we will deliver value. You know, there's, there's plenty of enterprises out there who spend a lot of money on integration and got nothing to show for it. We, we, we don't have that position at Jitterbit. All of our customers, if you look at um, the, uh, the use case with Skullcandy, you know, that wasn't a team of, of, of 20 developers tying that together. That was one guy over at Skullcandy, one bright guy using the Jitterbit tool and tying the whole thing together. And he wasn't sat there for two years or 18 months or six months pulling that together. He, 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 was, he was doing that over a couple of months. And, and the value that they've got out of that is, is just immense. Uh, yeah, so quite another question quickly. Can we try the 30-day free trial integrating SAP and Salesforce test environment? I mean, yes, we would encourage everyone to go to jitterbit.com forward slash try. 
um, and there you've got a 30-day trial. Typically, if you run out of time, you know, we would say if you're going to start a trial, maximize your time. And we can extend the trial by a few weeks if there's a project around that, but generally we like to encourage what we call managed trials, where we don't leave you out there to flounder. If you get stuck, we would encourage an open dialogue. You know, if you're transparent and exchange information with us to help support your project, then obviously you'll get a lot more cycles and time and investment from ourselves as well. So, yes, we would encourage you. Yes, you can try. Um, and, and, and hey, we've we've been through this before. You know, we've we've uh, you know we've we've got the uh, uh, the the, the Jitterbit project sat there. They're already talking to uh, SAP. So you know, there's knowledge there to share. And um, you know, exportable projects that we can um, give a give a, a potential customer a, a head start with. Uh, that would be a jitter pack. Yeah, yeah, that's what we call them, jitter list. Right. So I think we're uh, almost at the top of the hour soon. It's been uh, a very informed. Thank you, Vince. That's been great. Thanks for the demo as well. Hopefully, that's given everybody quite a lot to think about. Obviously, from the questions that have been coming in. Uh, Clearly there's interest and there's projects. Um, people have said that they'd like to have a discussion with us after, which has been encouraging. So that's about all we have time for today. Uh, so there's, there's, there's one mm -hmm. question on there, Barry, we should answer. What's the that data one? is not stored in, in JIP anywhere. Oh, right. Just no, come in now. Yeah. yeah our, our Harmony platform does not store or transact your data. The data is transacted through an agent. And so if you choose to use a cloud agent, a public agent, then yes, that is that is that is transacted in the cloud. Um, but if you're using a, a, a local, uh, a private cloud agent, and you've installed it behind your firewall, no data hits our platform. Um, your your data does not hit our cloud environment. It stays within your firewall. Um, and it is totally secure using that agent. Sorry, I just thought that one should be answered. Yeah, that sneaked in below the radar there at the last minute. Um, are there any final questions? I think that's it then. So listen, on behalf of uh, Vince and myself and the rest of the Jitterbit team, we'd like to thank all of you for joining today. Thanks for joining this webinar, and we hope the rest of the year is successful. And we'll hopefully see you out um, at some point this year. We'll be doing events. We'll be sponsoring Salesforce One events, I think, in London, Amsterdam, possibly Scandinavia too. So, and over and above our own event, so I think we'll be much more visible. Do send your emails and questions. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody.